In all those years I have been teaching Excel, one of the most common questions I receive is this. When we perform lookup function, how can we return multiple matches? The answer is no. Unfortunately, all those lookup functions, they are designed to return only the first match. They cannot return multiple matches. However, in the year 2020, Microsoft released a new function called filter, which can return multiple matches. So this video is not really about the xlookup function, but it's about the function filter, which make up the shortcoming of the xlookup function. This is the 11th video of the xlookup inside out series. If you haven't watched the previous videos yet, you may want to go back to start from the beginning so you will have better understanding of this lesson. You can download the training Excel file from the link in the description below so you can practice online. Now let's look at how filter function works to return multiple matches. If you are practicing with the downloaded Excel file, this file we're using is SuperExcel 11 return multiple matches by filter. Here we have this table on the left side with custom ID. They buy different product family or products for so many cases and dollar amount. And we have 78 records in this table. Given that table, we want to find out how many dollars is being sold to those custom ID. And you notice over here, those custom ID, they may repeat multiple times because they buy different product family or products. If they do appear multiple times, then we wish the formula over here to return all those matches if they appear three times to give me all three sales dollar amount for that custom id so that's something that the x lookup function cannot do but this can be done by a function called filter which was released by microsoft in excel in the year 2020. now let me create a copy of the sheet and let me draw this on my screen to show you the structure of the filter function in this cell i11 we are going to do a filter function, F-I-L-T-E-R. Filter function has three arguments, and the third argument actually can be omitted. Depending on your situation, you may or may not need this. So for now, let's omit the third argument. We'll get back to this in a few minutes. So we're going to have just two arguments. The filter function will help you to filter a range to return the results, those are meeting your criteria. And our formula over here, we are trying to return those sales dollars. Then our first argument will be this range of all those sales dollars over here. Now, the first argument could be a single column, could be a single row, or could be a range with multiple rows, multiple columns. Now, for this example, since we are returning the sales dollar, then this will be one single column. Then the second argument will be for you to specify the criteria. Which of those you want to return? What's your criteria? Our second argument will be evaluate all those custom ID in column B over here. And then to see if that equal to the cell H11 being that 13142. So for those custom ID who are equal to 13142, then that corresponding sales dollar will be returned. And if you have multiple matches, then all the multiple sales dollar will be returned accordingly. So that's the structure of the field function if you have only two arguments. Now let's do this formula in the first sheet. So in the cell I11, I will type equal sign, FIL, then tap key to enter the function. My first argument will be the range I want to filter and return, which will be those sales dollar. Let me use my left arrow key to go to column E from E11, control, shift arrow down, then F4 to make the absolute, then comma, that's my first argument. The second argument will be evaluating all those custom IDs against my criteria cell H11, which is 13142. Let me use my left arrow key to go to column B from B11, control, shift arrow down, F4 makes it absolute. And they have to equal the cell H11. Let me do equal sign, left arrow key to select the cell H11. And then we are going to omit the third argument for now, then close in bracket. Again, as I said before, 
if there are multiple records meeting a criteria, then those multiple value will be returned. If I now enter, you see we're getting two value over here, $253,034 and $118,624. If we go to check this 13142 custom ID, we do see that two records. Now we have a problem over here because this formula returns the two source dollar for 13142 in those one column. But here in cell I12, I wish to do a lot of formula to return cell dollar for the custom ID 14562. I do not want to have the source dollar of the custom ID 13142 in one column. I wish this to be in one single row. So this can be done by using a function called transpose. The transpose function can turn that from column into row. Let me go into the formula to add a transpose function. Transpose and tap into the function. Transpose function has only one argument, which is this range you want to turn them around to turn the row into column or column into row. Then add a colon bracket and enter. You see now we turned this range from one column into one row. And then I can copy the formula down to get the cell order for the other custom ID. If they appear more than one time, then all the corresponding cell order will be returned by this formula. This is an array formula because it's returning an array. So we'll automatically spill the results either to a different row or to a different column, depending on where they are. So that's a field function. Now, if I say I have a custom ID that's not being found in that custom ID range, let me change the first one, the custom ID to 99999, which does not exist in that table. You see, we're getting this CAC error. Now, you may not wish to get this error, you may wish to return maybe blank or some other values. So that's where the third argument of the field function comes in. Let me remove that closing bracket and add the third argument in. The third argument is a value will be returned if none of those record meeting your criteria. If you don't have the third argument and the nothing meeting your criteria, the formula will give you CAC error. If you do not wish to return that CAC error, then you will provide a value in the third argument, whatever you want, could be text, number, or any other function. You can return maybe just blank by doing double quotes, double quotes. Or if you want to return a text, you can put in double quotes, no record, and double quotes. Now, if I go back to my formula to change the formula of the field function to add the third argument, so comma, I'm going to say no record, and double quotes, and enter. You see, now we're not getting that CAC error anymore. We're getting this no record. If I copy the formula down for the other custom ID, they wouldn't affect the other one because they do find their match. If I do change one custom ID to say one, 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 you see, I'm getting no record rather than getting this CAC error. So that's how the field function works. And I want to say that here I'm touching just the surface of field function. In reality, the field function can do much, much more. Now, I also want to mention in the previous video of the XLOOKUP inside our series, we talked about how we can use XLOOKUP function in three different approaches to look up multiple fields to get that corresponding search order. Now, this can also be done by using field function too. Now, the difference is in the field function, our criteria will not be one criteria anymore, will be two criteria, which will be the custom ID equal to that custom ID over here, and put a family equal to that put a family over there. So we can have two criteria within the field function. Now let me do that. Equal sign, fil, tab into the function. My first argument will be the self order that I want to return to be filtered, f4, comma. Then the second argument will be my criteria, which I have two. If I have two criteria and I wish both criteria to be met at the same time, then we need to use a multiply to connect the two criteria. Then let me type a open bracket and go to the custom ID range, starting from B11, control shift arrow down, F4, then equal to this custom ID in the cell H26, and then colon bracket as my first criteria, then multiply by my second criteria. 
and then all other open bracket go to the sort of family range from C11, control shift arrow down, and then F4. And this one, it has to be equal to the sort of family in the cell I26, and then colon bracket. And I'm not going to have the third argument because I do know I have matches for this cosmetic and pro family. And then all other code and bracket and enter. Now you see I get the same result as we did in the other three approaches. And copy the formula down. We get all those cosmetic D and pro family, their corresponding self element. So this is a lot of approach that can do things that XLOOKUP can do and even more. If you enjoyed learning the future function from this video, please give it a thumb up and subscribe to my channel so you can learn more. If you have any question, please write a comment below and I will answer your questions. In the next video of the XLOOKUP Inside Out series, you are going to learn how to handle a lot of one of the most common problems people encounter when using XLOOKUP. When they look for a number, and that number does appear to be in the range they are looking within. Somehow, XLOOKUP couldn't find a match. You are going to learn a process to identify what the cause is and also learn a solution to solve that effectively. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Thank you.